Remixing Nine Inch Nails' Discipline was a really important moment for me. I had just finished my album Ephemera a few months prior to that, and I had been completely just creatively burnt out and almost borderline depressed because I was just stuck in this rut of uh, like postpartum depression, if you will, of having finished a record. And finally, I just came across the stems of this online and I decided, you know what, this, uh, this might be something that would actually kick in some inspiration, and it was. And it's one of my favorite remixes I've ever done to this day. So I'm just gonna walk you through how it's put together and let's get to it. For those of you who haven't heard this record, um, it can be listened to everywhere, but actually, well not Spot, but I think SoundCloud and people put it on YouTube and whatever. But uh, I'm just gonna go through parts of it and I'll just go from the start to the finish of the song um, because there are a lot of different sections of it and uh, it's really quite cool. So starting at the beginning, we have this. And that's kind of the main groove of the entire song. So what's going on here, as you can see, I have a, there's a side chain that is uh, just going straight to a bus, bus 69, and that's gonna be the side chain that triggers anything that's being side chained throughout the entire track. Uh, I have two kicks, and this one's called the ISO Xmas, or Christmas Kid 05. These are uh, machine drum kicks I made years ago and actually gave them away for free. They were called the Ice Rhythm Christmas Kicks. And then that's layered with a kick called Back to Life Kick. This is a kick I made when I was working with Blake Lewis doing uh, his record. And um, Back to Life was one of the songs. So this is the kick from that song. And that sounds like this. And then layered with the Ice Rhythm Kick. It's pretty thick. And then I've got a couple claps. Um, this is the first one. And it's called SK Clap and Snap. That's from a song I did with Tanya Zagar called Sick, hence SK Snap and Clap. And then that's also layered with a drum sample. I guess some other clap from um, a Wave Alchemy library, Minimal Techno, which means I did that actually. You should know your own samples. I don't. It was, I did it like 10 years ago to be honest, so I can't actually remember them all. But, um, and then there are like these little fills. And to be honest, I don't really remember how I made those. Um, this is a track I haven't even looked at the session in about five years and I just stumbled upon this last night and I figured, you know what, I should, uh, I should really explore it. So let's get out of here and go down to kind of the motific parts that are uh, a theme throughout the whole track. So this is part of it. And we have that groove kind of sitting in the back of everything. and. Um, there's not much, I mean, it's just really basic EQ work and then some filtering and nothing crazy. That's just to actually do some automation. But these, these are the important ones. And these were created by basically morphing a hong drum with a drum loop. And I used a plugin called Zenactic Morph which is, it's a spectral morphing plugin. It's really, really fun. And that combined with this side of it, the morph pluck. So you can kind of hear that, you know, it does sound like a hong drum, but it's a little bit alien and that's what's really creative about it. That's what's fun about it. That's why I like it. So those things, those are a theme that's throughout the entire song. Uh, there is some bass stuff going on, and this came out of a modular. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is, because it says G-Tain bass, and maybe that was just me trying to say gain bass or something and spelling it wrong. But it sounds like this. And I think it might have been like Mutable Instruments braids or something like that. But um, that's that. And then we also have these delay leads. also made on the modular. And um, I was probably using the Harvest Man Hertz Donut a lot at this time, because just knowing where I was in my life in 2015 and what kind of like equipment I was using, and I think that was pretty uh, common back then for me. And um, what's going on here for the most part is that um, this is actually reversed, I believe. So I think what the original sound was, was closer to this. But I decided it sounded more fun reversed, and that's why, that's why we have that. 
And there's some kind of phaser probably that was like a notch filter or something like that on the system. But that's how that's created. And it goes through also, um, see, I just reinstalled everything. So I got to deal with this stuff. Um, yeah, it's just a high pass filter and then a short delay, an eighth note delay from Echo Boy. And then it's also, it's getting side chained. And I'm just using the basic Pro Tools channel strip to do this apparently. And that's the whole intro. So when we get to Trent's vocals, there's a lot more space now. Um, kind of, you can see right here that um, these even come down in volume. Am I so tough enough? Drums are much more muted. And that is some effect I made. It was just a really feedbacky tape delay style thing. And now the kicks, the beat comes back in right in the second half. Here's more of that morphy, the Hong drum morphs. They're so cool. So then we have some pads come in, um, just in this transition. One's from Braids, the modular. And a big part of that sound is, as always, even tied is black hole. Just doing the uber wash um, and then there's filter and EQ but it's pretty boring and then this is one of the few things I used actually from the original with the exception of his vocals is the uh, this disciplined tone and this comes from the actual song and that's layered with braids And then also underneath all of this, we've got a really low Reese, just a really nice low bass. And that flips the original chord progression because now we have it resolving bass, or uh, the transition note in the bass is the flat two, which makes everything sound darker. And I love that that's the metal in me and I can't take it out. So more flat twos, flat twos are wonderful. And, um, Again, basic EQ and filter work. This time, the side chain is, oh, I did, I just redid my whole system. And uh, yeah, so I'm still like reauthorizing plugins and that's frustrating. But um, this should be actually, uh, that's what's side chaining. So that's what I'm using there and that's good to know. I need to authorize that one. Um, little bits of effects here. Just stuff I made. Lots of granular metallic-y stuff. And you know, I, I was doing this quickly. I didn't even add fades because I was probably just working quick and I just didn't care. And now we get into finally like the, the main groove. There is one more, there are some vocal effects here. And um, that is also done using that Synaptic Morph plugin, using it actually as a vocoder, where I just morphed his vocal with a synthesizer. So layered underneath his actual vocals, you get this kind of like spectrally vocody morphy thing, and it sounds awesome. I need your help. I need your discipline. You know once I start, I can And this is a time stretch myself. vocal of Trent underneath. And then we get into the first big groove of the song. So you can hear there are a lot more like little intricate drum parts going on. 
First is we have a, a break beat I made in the slate drums. And that's layered in there. And then we have these little things. And these are quite fun. And it's just like glitchy thing, glitchy beats I made in battery. So if we pull all the drums together now, it's starting to really fill up quite nicely. And then we got the morph beats too. And that leads us into the next verse. I was mistaken, right. This is when we get the, the introduction of the heavy section. First time we actually get something like this. So by the time we get to the second verse, now things are grooving harder. There is, uh, I've actually added some real bass in there now. This came originally from the, uh, the Stems of Discipline, but it's, uh, it's been cut up and rearranged to basically fit and pitch shifted at times to fit my needs. So let's just solo the bass. Um, we'll put the bass and the drums together and you'll hear what's going on there as they all dance around together. So you can hear how actually the actual, the, the real bass, that it's really cut just to be these individual notes. And it's just kind of accentuating upbeats, really. And then we have these, these, they're called gnarly bass. And it's really filtered down at this point. But previously, in the heavy section, not so clean. And those were also made on the modular. And um, if you look right here at the screen, you can see they're just double tracked and one's panned hard left and one, the other pans hard right. And that's how we just get that really wide separated sound. And then we just have the vocals. And the vocal treatment in here, I mean, again, like even just looking at the channels itself, I really didn't, I actually didn't do anything. Um, they are going to, there's a delay send and that's it. And you can see they all, there's a lot of editing right here, here. And uh, so let's just check that out. Ooh, nothing matters to me. Nothing matters is my... So it's just hyper editing on the grid. And um, looks like it's 30 second notes. And yeah. That's all it is, just really tightly edited, cut up vocals. And then that's actually a delay send right there. But on top of it, then we also have this. Which is another one of those like Morphe vocoder sounds. So when you layer it all together, it really sounds very big. It almost sounds very like uh, industrial. Ooh, well, nothing matters to me. Nothing matters as much. So. Cool little effect. And then over here, um, there is more effects here. I, I can see this is probably some granulized version of the vocal. <laughs> right. So the way I did this is um, basically, let's just play it. I see you left a mark. <laughs> That's not how it's actually sung. It's supposed to sound like this. This is the original. I see you left a mark. But I wanted it to be cooler. So I, I totally grain stretched this thing out and then crossfaded it back in so it sounds like it actually is performed that way. And then just another quick crossfade just to bring us back to the next part of the verse. And again, more just delay sends. 
And now we get to the first, uh, I think that's the first time we get to the first chorus. Okay, so there's a new little vocal motif. There's a hook that's created right here. It's this. And it's important because this is going to carry into the next section, which is another like groove section, if you will. And um, that's obviously layered underneath the vocal, creating a little bit of a harmony. And instrumentally, everything kind of starts to fade away a little bit here because we want the space because, again, we're going to basically hit you over the head once this new section comes in right after. But we do have this pad, and that is the one addition to this section. I need your help. Just fading in for the background. And let's take a look at that vocal edit as well, because that's a pretty, uh, pretty gnarly one. And yep, just looking at it, this is definitely 16th notes right here. So it's basically manual time stretching in a way, where. Uh, I basically just took, say, this little slice and copy that over, then take the next one, drag him out, copy that over, do that again. So basically I'm taking, I mean, I'm not doing exactly the same here, but it's the same concept. So I'm doubling the length of this vocal by literally just doubling 64th notes. And that would give me something that's twice as long. So, Help me. but you just do it to taste, you do it whatever sounds good. Um, I obviously just kind of, you know, cheated and did it quickly trying to replicate it and I didn't do it the same, but that's okay. But that's how it's done. And it's just done on both of the words, help myself, and it's just help my, help my. And it's a cool sound, you know, and it just jumps from 32nd notes to 64th notes right at that very end. And that's how you get that really mechanical sound. So this is important because since we introduced this little vocal motif, Now this is gonna carry. So let's go back. Okay, so what's going on here, the chord progression has changed, um, and it's more chordal, I suppose you could say. You're going to see the difference in the bass, because now we actually have it doing the full chord motion. And we use kind of these, these upbeats, these dies, these kind of sounds. So if we layer it with the sub and our G-Tain bass. So you can see they're actually playing off each other. That there's basically, there's a gap in the sub and that's when we get the discipline bass. Then that gets layered also with the gnarly bass again. And it's, you know, in that little pattern, um, we have the tones, which just serving as ambience, basically, that's it. Its sole purpose is ambience. Then let's go to all the drums that get added in here now. We actually have crashes for the first time. It's the first time we've had a crash, period. Actually, well, almost, we had it at the first one, but Everything's bigger now. There's an additional snare called break snare. 
big reverby snare. What's the verb on that? Yep, the good old UA, uh, it's the plate. This thing's great on snare drums, the 250. I use it all the time. Anytime I wanted like an 80s plate verb kind of sound, always, I used to always use this, and I still use this most of the time, but back in 2015, it's like exclusively what I used for that. So let's solo all the drums now. I'm gonna make our quantization a lot smaller, or a lot bigger, easier to look at. We have cymbals now as well. And that's these slate hats and slate rides. So here's the hat. And here's the ride. And it really adds, you know, it's all sorts of high-end energy that we didn't have before. And I'll show you the, I mean, it's so important to have like high-end, I think, for energy. It's, I mean, it's very hip not to do it, obviously, like lots of R&B records do that and it's really cool. But I always find for me to really push something, I want a lot of high-end. And I like high-end in everything in general, I just do. Um, even when I was a kid, I was, you know, always like in the car, I didn't boost the bass, I boosted the treble. So without this stuff, Here's the section. It's okay, but with it, it adds a lot more energy, and that's really the, the purpose of that. So, and that transitions us into the bridge. And I really love the bridge because this is where, it's probably my favorite, well, one of my favorite moments of the song, because it gets creative here. And that's because we changed time signatures, and this whole thing has been in 4-4 up to this point. Now the bridge is suddenly gonna be put in five, and the song, the original song is not in 5-4, it's in 4-4, so it took a little uh, editing on my part, but it, it wasn't complicated. I mean, this isn't, you know, a heartbreaking work of staggering genius or anything like that. Um, but here's what happens in the 5-4 section of the bridge. Still in 4-4 here. And here's where it switches to 5. And one of the ways I got around that is um, there is basically, there's a vocal send right on this whisper vocal and it's on the myself. So if we go to delay through, you can see that every time it says myself, that's what gets sent to the delay. So there's always something kind of lingering in the background, a little ghosty trail. And that happens at least the first couple of times. After that, when the section gets more intense, um, let's actually take a listen to this because you can see like there's that extra beat that I've had to cut out. Um, so it's actually two beats because it's over two bars. So, you know, it's something that would be eight beats is now 10. And so you can see that I literally just slice the end off of it. But if I'm right, oh no. It's just how it is. Um, and I just repeat that same vocal over and over. This is what the original vocal was. So you see, it's not the same time signature at all. But this is how I cut it. The other thing that we add in here, it's quite a bit. Um, so first we get this stuff, which is kind of a, it almost starts to sound more live here. And a big part of that are the additional snares. So we have these break snares again. These are a big, you know, plate eighties verb snares. Let's actually do all the drums. So we'll go from, say, this part.
And so the reason why we have that snare right on that last downbeat is because this is where suddenly we're introducing the chord progression back. So if I say I bring the bass, So you can hear the chord progression changes too. There's additional bass in here, also from braids. And I like that chord progression. It's uh, slightly out, which is nice. Here's all the bass together. With the morph pad. And yeah, it's that nice little chromatic note on uh, the second note. There's also end lead, and this is end lead. And this was introduced originally in that first heavy drop section. Again, modular synth stuff. I was using it for like almost everything back then. And that's actually the MIDI channel that went to it. And, you know, very minimal, not a lot going on there, but there's a lot of effects on it and that's kind of, you know, the charm of it. So this all builds into the really heavy section of the song. There's a big effects thing, which happens right here, a big swell. It's a big granulized cymbal. And this is when you get hit over the head. Stop myself. So that's the metal part, right? Um, so one thing is there is an extra bar of 2-4 right here just to have a little bit more space, add a little bit more tension. And so when we drop back into 4-4, it's just the impact of that is that much stronger. And that's the sole purpose of it. It also gives a little bit more space for this effect, which is just um, like a bit crushed version of that morph. So then here's how the heavy sections put together. First, we have these, the gnarly bass stuff from before. We now have this, which is definitely Hertz Donut, just really distorted, really noisy, layered with the bass. We also have the sub, and then that, that, offbeat, um, that offbeat bass, the G-Tane bass. It's heavy. Almost sounds like guitars, but no guitars at all, actually. Um, the drums also make this very heavy, too, because look at those kicks. I mean, it, it's kind of silly. It's, you know, straight 16th notes. And uh, <laughs> it's really helpful to do... Uh... Actually, what I was referencing was uh, there's a Nine Inch Nails track called The Becoming off Downward Spiral. And uh, the way Downward Spiral ends or climaxes is these, like, really hard machine gun style kicks. So that's how that's done. And, uh, and it's also like, it's a metal trick too, of course, like a double bass pedal or whatever. But um, this is like, you know, this is the impactful part of the song that's really heavy. And it's just put together like that. There's nothing else new really. Um, it's entirely, those, like those few changes are what make this part so much heavier than the rest of the song. So here we're basically building this back up because now we need to get to the final course. So the way that's done is slowly just reintroducing elements from before. So like the morph pads. 
And these are the heavy versions, just like the, the pedal tone version of the Morph Pad. And they sound awesome at half tempo, just out of, so you know. So dark. The tone has been there the whole time. Just that ambience again, just providing ambience. But we also have a vocal come in again, and it is that original, that motif we created for that first drop. This big ambient vocal. And here we got the final chorus. And now there is pretty much a harmonizer underneath that vocal the entire time. Again, it's our uh, our fake vocoder. Discipline. I need your help. I need your discipline. Because one sister, I cannot stop myself. I need your discipline. And that's layered with that motif. Discipline. I need your help. So, pretty cool. And there's another melody in here, too. Um, and it's our end lead. And you can actually hear, this is what's re-triggering, or this is what actually the vocoder is vocoding as the vocal. So it's nice sometimes just to borrow from other elements because then it makes a really cohesive whole. So that's what's done there. And uh, other than that, that, um, you know, we got the breakbeats back, the big snares back, but that's, uh, oh, and now we have these kick rolls also, right, right. Um, I, so I missed these previously, but it's, it should be that same kick, the, uh, the ISO kick. And then it's just doing little rolls. Ah, different kick, but serves the same purpose. So let's solo all the kicks because I think uh, as of this point, like the heavy, heavy machine gun kicks are kind of done with. Yes, they are. So this is what the new kicks are doing. And again, it's just adding momentum, it's just pushing this thing further and further. And the idea was just to make this honestly as big as possible as it, like literally as big as it could be by the very end. Um, more vocals get added here. Do you know, so it gets pretty cacophonous eventually. There is a big edit here. And I'll play that for you. And it's all just doing those really, really tight cuts. Just, it's a ton of them. But uh, you can see, you know, they're, they're duplicates of each other. They get cut really, really, really tight. Um, it goes down to 16th notes, basically. And then it gets pulled off the grid a little bit for like the retardando kind of thing. And then I just kind of brought it back up and then did it really tight. Um, just kind of reverse the whole idea, but it's all manually done by hand. You know, this isn't a plugin doing this or anything. It's literally all me. Let's bring this back. And the way we make this really cacophonous at the end is just by adding more and more. So we got these open reeses back. And that's pushing it more. But then I also have a reverb send of this that I just printed down. And as this part grows, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger underneath it. And there is that symbol again. And 
And I believe there is a, no, that's it for that. So let's put it all together. And there is one little bit, and that is called end build. And it is this. Just granular pitch shifting, really slow granular pitch shifting. goes pretty high up there. And it goes through a Valhalla room, as well as some EQ, and then the glue plugin, which is pumping it. So uh, that is getting side-chained with the actual side-chain itself. However, because I have failed to reauthorize that plugin, it is not doing it. But um, you get the idea. So that is the total breakdown of how discipline is put together. Um, there is actually old stuff at the back, which is, I'm not really sure what some of the stuff is, but like, what is this? This looks like a field recording. That's one of my cats eating. On that note, I'm gonna sign off. Um, but yeah, this is a, uh, it's interesting. I haven't looked at this in, until, basically an hour before I started recording this, I opened up the session just to see if it would even actually open because I wanted to see if all the plugins I had would still, or if I was basically missing plugins. And uh, that's how I discovered I needed the glue. So here we are. But um, yeah, I, this, is a, this is a special remix in my heart. I really love this one. And I, uh, I hope you got something out of this. And you know, until I do this again, it's been a long time since I did one of these. And uh, it's been, uh, you know, a nice change of pace. So until then, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and I will see you guys next time. Also, now that I'm done with the breakdown, I'm also just gonna play the whole track start to finish through the session so you can see just in real time how everything happens over the full course of the track. So enjoy.
Myself.